hello everyone uh, my name is karthik i work at lg as a staff design engineer uh, my topic for today's presentation is a scalable configurable neural network accelerator based on risk pi in the recent years neural network algorithms are being increasingly used to solve many of the machine learning tasks in order to accelerate these neural network algorithms lg has come up with its own neuromorphic accelerator called lg neural engine it's in short lne as we can see in the block diagram uh, lne is a scalable architecture scalable in terms of number of tilets and tiles the tilet being the fundamental block and inside each tilet there is a risk pi core and it's also configurable in terms of memory sizes and pipeline stages and also other options which i'll be going through in the next slides uh, to note some of the lne's features lne is a scalable and flexible architecture and uh, it can meet requirements from a small iot device to a high end device it supports both inference and on device learning for edge devices it has a customized isa instruction uh, isa extension for to support neural network uh, functions many ne neural networks are already being verified and supported to name a few under image classification it's google net mobile net and others and for object detection it's uh, uh, tiny yolo satnet and others uh, image segmentation it's segnet erfnet and others it has a high speed data path with a target frequency of 1 gigahertz uh, it has industry standard axi interfaces for easy soc integration Uh, it uh, it supports a uh, 16 bit and 8 bit data path and there is a binarized wait feature in order to have a higher frames per second and to lower the ddr bandwidth uh, lne also has a customized instruction accurate spike simulator the architecture is already silicon proven on tsmc 28 nanometer hpc plus technology uh, coming to the lne's architecture uh, lne can be scaled up to 128 cores uh, a group of tilets form a tile and a group of tiles form a lne and a tilet is the most fundamental block and inside each tilet there is a risk pi and an npu with mam blobs uh, each tilet can be operated independently simultaneously and also synchronized if needed uh, with semaphores there is a common asynchronous data movement engine in order to load data to the on chip memories in order to fetch instructions to each of the tilets there is a common instruction cache Uh, in order to transfer data to different tilets there are outer ring bus and the inner, inner ring bus uh, there is also a on big a large on chip memory uh, that's tile shared memory in short tsm uh, it a host can also access the internal registers through an axi light uh, axi 4 light slave interface all the ddr interfaces are axi 4 master interfaces uh in the upcoming slides i'll be going through each of the blocks and their options the first one is the risk pi uh, we chose risk pi since it was an open source architecture and there was also an ability to add custom instructions to the uh, cpu and there was also a ready availability for the spike and the risk pi tool chain we needed a general purpose core mainly for parameter computations and uh, and to support functionality which was not present in npu so uh, inside lne we have a risk for risk pi which is a four stage pipeline cpu it supports rv32 imc instruction set with mnc being optional and we have other flavors of risk pi as well to suit the uh, to suit the need uh, the need can be from a small iot device or a high end device uh, coming to the neural processing unit uh, in short L npu uh, npu actually accelerates most of the almost all the neural uh, neuromorphic related operations with the help of the risk pi extended isa npu supports activate uh, pool percept convolution and vector operations uh, it uh, the number of stages inside the npu are also configurable it mainly interacts with mam blobs and tsm it has 8 uh, cross 8 of 8 uh, cross 8 max of 6 for 16 bit data and 16 cross 16 max for 8 bit data so for a 128 core configuration it has a, the number of max is equal and to 2k which is uh, more than required for most of the uh, neural network operations uh, there is a common instruction cache in order to fetch instructions to each of the tilets it it also has a different memory size options as well and there is also a uh, option to have a per core i cache and uh, instruction memory as well uh, there is also a data memory uh, with uh, it also has a um, memory size options as well and it also ddr accessible uh, coming to the on chip memories there are two types uh, that's one is the mam blobs and the other is the tsm 
Inside the memblots, uh, each memblot can be loaded with the source, weight, and the destination data. And there can be an extra memblot uh, just for double buffering. It also has uh, different memory size options as well. Uh, there's a tile shared memory which acts as a large on-chip memory. Uh, and uh, there are different memory size options are also available for the TSM. And all the memblobs and the TSM are being loaded using a data movement engine, which I'll be going through in the next slide. So the data movement engine is similar to a DMA, and it's configured through a data move instruction from the RISC-V. Uh, uh, there is an option to have a 2D or 3D memory layout being stored onto the, each of the on-chip memories. There is also a support for the uh, multicast uh, or the broadcast feature. It also has a different memory size option. Uh, it can, uh, the data time can be transferred from the TSM through the DME. And also the TSM can interact with the NPU. And the TSM can uh, share the data with the memblobs as well. Uh, in, order to, uh, in order for the host to access the tilets, there is an AXLite 4 slave interface as well being provided. The host can access most of the registers and the memories inside the LNE. Uh, the host can even uh, activate the tilet individually or it can uh, activate the tilets all together at once. So these are all the blocks which uh, are present in the LNE. Uh, the ring bus is nothing but it, in order to share the data to each of the tilets, there are two ring buses. One is the inner ring bus and the other, other is the outer ring bus. The inner ring bus is handled by the stream port and the outer ring bus is handled by the junction block. Uh, so the next one is like LG AI SOC. So LNE was first integrated into LG AI SOC, uh, which is the first uh, AI SOC from LG, for mainly for the consumer electronics. Apart from uh, LNE, it has a Wi-Fi, CPU, uh, security, and a camera, a vision uh, processing engines, and also a sensor subsystem. It was mainly used for neural network acceleration and learning. As we can see in the diagrams, uh, most of the sensors are being used to enhance uh, uh, the camera processing uh, for the low light enhancement and also to detect humans, uh, recognition and tracking. Coming to the LNE software flow, LNE software framework supports uh, trained models in CAFE, uh, TensorFlow, and PyTorch. LNE's SDK converts and maps the trained weights, uh, trained model and the weights onto tiles and the tilets. The trained model is compiled with the RISC-V uh, GCC and it's ported onto LNE. So I wanted to show the demo by wrapping up my presentation. In this demo, the, what it's trying to do is we are having a robo vacuum cleaner being considered for the first AI uh, SOC application. So in this, the uh, robo vacuum cleaner tries to avoid the obstacle. So this concludes my presentation. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Uh, could you explain how you split the inference workload across the tiles? Like, how was that split? Um, we have a LNE that's uh, mainly for the inferencing, and we have a different LNE mainly for the uh, on-device learning. 